This is Jonas from VSGLWiz.com. In this video, you are going to learn how to use a function in VSGL. In the previous tutorial, we created a timer module for controlling the traffic lights in this intersection. We derived a state diagram which accurately describes all of the different states that the traffic lights in this intersection can have. From the state diagram, we created an enumerated type with all the state names as possible values. Then we implemented the behavior of the state machine in a clocked process, using a case statement with one branch for each of the states. To create a time delay between the different states, we wrapped the new assignment to the state signal in an if statement. In the if statement, we compared the number of elapsed clock periods to a value corresponding to the amount of time we wanted the program to stay in this state. We did this for each of the states, repeating almost the same code over and over again. The only difference between these code snippets being the destination state name and the number of seconds and minutes we are waiting. Isn't there a way to avoid repeating code like this? The answer is subprograms. We've already learned about one type of subprogram back in tutorial number 19, the procedure. In this video, I'm going to show you another type of subprogram, the function. Before we begin, I'm going to head over to the test bench from the previous tutorial. I'm going to copy all of the code to a new file, which I will name t21 for tutorial number 21 underscore function tb.vht. I'm changing the entity names as well. We also need to change the name of the device under test from t20 underscore traffic lights to t21 underscore traffic lights, which will be the name of the new module that we are about to create. And that's all the changes we are going to do to the test bench, because we're not going to change the behavior of the traffic lights module, we're only going to simplify the code. Then I'll head over to the traffic lights module from the previous tutorial, and we're gonna copy the code to a new file, which I will name t21 underscore traffic lights .vhd. And of course we need to change the architecture name from t20 underscore traffic lights to t21 underscore traffic lights. This will be the starting point for this tutorial. Okay, so I told you that we were going to simplify the code by using a function. What a function is going to do is to calculate the number of clock cycles in any number of minutes and seconds. To declare a function, we start by typing the keyword function, followed by an arbitrary name. I'll name this function counterval. Then, in parentheses, we need to specify the parameters. The first one will name minutes. It will be of type integer, and we will give it a default value of zero. The default value is optional in functions. It will be used if you call the function without assigning anything to this parameter. The next parameter will name seconds, this one too of type integer and with a default value of zero as well. Notice that the function parameters are different from the parameters to a procedure which we learned to create back in tutorial number 19. A function's parameters doesn't have any signal, constant or variable keywords in front of them. Neither do they have any in, out or in out directions specified. This is because a function's parameters are always inputs. Also, you can never change them. Once the function has been called with a set of parameters, they behave like constants. After the parentheses close, we'll specify the type of return value that this function produces. We'll type return integer, which means that this function must return an integer value, otherwise it's a compilation error. Then we'll type the keyword is, followed by the keyword begin on a new line. Inside of here, we'll write the code that's performed by this function, but for now, we'll add a couple of empty lines and close it off by using the end function tag. This function will take a minutes and a seconds argument as inputs, both of type integer, and it will return an integer value, which will be the number of clock periods in that time interval. This area between the is keyword and the begin keyword is the declarative region of the function. You can use this space to declare variables and constants that are visible only inside of the function. We'll go ahead and declare a helper variable named total seconds of type integer. On the next line, we'll assign to total seconds the value of seconds plus the value of minutes times 60. Then we are going to return the total number of seconds multiplied by the clock frequency in hertz minus 1. We have to subtract 1 because we are counting from 0, so otherwise we would be waiting a little bit too long. Ok, so now that our counterval function is complete, we can head down to our state machine code. Here we will replace the clock frequency times 5 minus 1 with a call to the counterval function. We want the state machine to stay in this state for 5 seconds. Inside of the parentheses I'm typing seconds, arrow notation, 5. In the if statement we are comparing the value of the counter signal to the return value from the counterval function. 
In the call to it, we are assigning 5 to the seconds parameter. The value 5 will overwrite the default value of 0. We didn't assign anything to the minutes parameter, so this one will get the default. In this case, the total seconds variable gets the value 5 plus 0 times 60, which is 5. And finally, the number of clock cycles we have to count to wait to the total number of seconds and minutes will be returned to the caller of this function. I'll copy the function call to the start north state as well. We want this state to last for 5 seconds too. Next up is the north state which lasts for 1 minute. Here I'll call counterval and assign 1 to the minutes parameter and nothing to the seconds parameter. In this case, the total seconds variable will get the value of minutes times 60. The seconds parameter will get the default value of 0 and thus won't affect this calculation. The next state is stop north, which is a 5 seconds transitional state. So I'll copy paste the 5 seconds function call into this state. And I'll do the same for the west next and start west states. The west state is a 1 minute state, so we'll add a 1 minute function call, just like we did for the north state. The final state is stop west, which lasts for 5 seconds. Alright, so now we have replaced all the calculations with calls to our new counterval function. It's time to simulate. I'm saving the files and adding them to our ModelSim project, compiling and starting the simulation. I'm typing in the console window, run 5 min. This will give me 5 minutes worth of simulation time. When we zoom out in the waveform, we can see that everything looks like it did in the previous tutorial. That's because we haven't changed the behavior of the module, just the implementation. Now, if we click to add another cursor, I can use the two of them to measure the time difference. I'll use the Find Next Transition button to place the second cursor exactly on the next state transition. In between the two cursors, we can see that the time difference is exactly 60 seconds, which is exactly how long the north state should last. Then we can use the Find Transitions buttons again to measure one of the 5 second states. I'll have to zoom in a bit for this. And there we can see that the start north state lasts for exactly 5 seconds. Although adding this new function didn't make our code any shorter, I think it made the state machine code a bit more readable. Functions are great for standardizing calculations like the one we replaced in this tutorial. If you repeat the same formula many places throughout the code, you should consider using a function instead. Then you know it is correctly implemented every time. Functions also make the code easier to maintain. If you want to change the formula, you can do it all in one place. Functions and procedures are the two sub-programs you will encounter in VSGL. They are very much alike, but also quite different. Functions always have a return value, while procedures don't. The parameters to a function are always inputs and they behave like constants inside of the function, while a procedure can have output parameters, like signals or variables. Another important difference between functions and procedures is that functions cannot contain wait statements, while procedures can. A function call always consumes zero simulation time. So when should you use a procedure and when should you use a function? A function should be used whenever you need a single return value. You put something in and you get something back. Every time. Use functions to avoid repetitive calculations. A procedure, on the other hand, should be used to replace repetitive portions of your logic. Whenever the code that you want to replace requires a sub-program to change more than one signal, you will have to use a procedure. That's all I had for you in this video about functions in VHGL. Thank you for watching and check out vhglwiz.com for more tutorials and blog posts.